Hey everyone, so in this video I wanted to show you the character settings for the GDXR template and how you can kind of use those and how they're being used. So there's a data folder inside of uh, GDXR VR template blueprints data and in here we've got a couple of structs, data tables and enumerations. Um, basically what you need to do is kind of look at the character settings stuff. So if I zoom in, we have character settings, gaze interaction settings, Handheld menu settings, notifications, player HUD, as you can see. So basically each part of the template is broken down into its own struct that contains information required for that system. So for the player, since we're, that's what we're going to be looking at here, we've got the character settings. Now if we open this up, you'll see we've got a struct and a default value. Um, the default values is the channel that you want to change. So if you want to change the presets to what happens when you press play in editor, you would do that here. So can player move, can player jump, uh, show controllers on or off. So if you want to show controllers, you can take that and it'll show the open XR controllers. If you untick it, it'll show the skeletal mesh hands, hide hands when grabbing. When you grab an object, do they go invisible? That kind of thing. So you can see here that these are the options that we've got in our template. And what this does, is in this case for the templates template itself that's actually fed into our game instance so we can see here inside of our game instance we contain these structs that our actors are using and we do that because they're then pulled into the actor so if we go to VR character we can see that we've got quite a bit going on in here but if we find a section that I know has our character settings. So here, for example, you can see that what we're doing on begin play is we get our game instance, and then we set, we, we pull in that information from our character settings. So we get our game instance, get current player settings, and from there we break it, and we can use this pin to access <coughs> all the variables inside of our player that we can use to run content inside of the blueprint itself. So what this allows us to do is from our game instance, we can store these and use the game instance as a middleman per se. So you don't need the actual data assets inside of the player or the actors. And then we can also save these because they're structs, save game actually has access to these as well. So all these variables, if they change in the struct, it means the player saves in the game instance. I'll cover all this in more detail. But now what you want to do is, if let's say you want to add some more variables to our player that is going to be saved and going to be stored. All you would do is go to add variable. You can see we've got new variable member at the bottom. This could be something like player name, if it was an option. And then we could have this as a name. Hit save. Default value could stay to none. And because our struct exists inside of our game instance and our player is pulling this in, you can see that we actually have access to that player name variable now. So you can use this to populate information and then save it as well. So that's pretty much it for the player settings. They're all contained inside of the struct underscore character settings. And you can play around with these to do what you want and also play around with the other options. So inside of player HUD settings, you can see we've got variables to change or enable the HUD completely, follow the camera update speed, and then HUD distance, for example. So just modifying these will allow you to mix and match the template and go from there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully that was all right. Um, if you've got any more questions, make sure to head over to the Discord. There's a channel in there for the GDXR template and I bet it will help you out some more. Cool.